Hey guys, I'm just hanging out at my brother's place in Ocean Grove. I am going to muck around with my garage band and uh, yeah, I'm going to put together a song in maybe the next 10 minutes and I'll see how we go, see if you guys like it. All right, so um, here we go. Just starting with a new song and I'm going to start with some smart drums. So I've gone into the drum section. My hand's gonna be in the way, so if you've got any questions, you can just fire it in. Cool, now I've got eight bars of a hip hop drum loop. And section A, then I'm gonna go add section B, add section C. Now I'm gonna duplicate section A and Duplicate section B. So now I've got five sections. So if we imagine verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, we're gonna have six sections. For now. I have no idea how to use this. <laughs> uh, how do I get back to the start? Oh, that's really weird. Uh, okay, so I've got section B. Um, need some drum beats. How long is my song now? What I might actually do, go into this section. I'm gonna make section 16 bars. Actually, let's work on. <laughs> this is a bit fun. Let's let's create a um a bass groove now. So we've got some drums. We're gonna get some bass happening. So we want some we want some synth. Oh, I'm gonna use a keyboard synth. Smart or a synth. I'm gonna use the arpeggiator because low bass makes everyone go crazy. Dotted eighth notes. No, we want. Then we're going to use the um, the I'm gonna use a minor pentatonic. I'm gonna use a minor scale actually. <laughs> I 
cool, but I want it to be lower. How are we going? Five minutes in. We're gonna go 130 for the tempo. And we're gonna go change the key to A minor. I don't really like this drum beat anymore. Maybe I should have started with the bass line. We're gonna change room hip hop, we're gonna go to house drums. Just 
love really simple ideas. <laughs> Maybe we'll keep going because I've only got <laughs> I've only got half a half a song, not even half a song. Wondering how fast I could get through this. If I was working on my computer, I'd be able to do this much quicker. Anyway, it's fun to kind of learn how to do this. Anyway, um, smart drums. Oh, we've already got this. So right now, just press this um, That's kind of cool. I don't like a couple of those bass notes in there, so I'm just going to go in and edit them. So at the moment, I'm just working on the first eight bars. Edit. So all I'm doing here is just moving things around with my fingers and I kind of know the rough idea of where things go, but I'm not really worrying about it too much. I'm just putting them in and seeing what happens. So just like with things like this, like the core, the, the notes starting in the, not on the start of the bar. So just doing that makes just things just look a little neater. Don't even know how to draw. Yes, I do. <laughs> cool. Uh, okay. Cool. Awesome. Maybe I'll just adjust this back to eight bars for now. So we've got a loop. And I'm going to make that the same as this part of the star. So it's, so that starts halfway through. So we've got the same kind of roughly the same chord progression. We go out of that window. All right, what am I going to add next? Maybe some. So, what are the chords we got? 
I think we have uh, edit. We've got an A, C, then B, then E, A, C, B, then um, E. I wonder how I draw things in for a, some synth chords. Or I can just practice them. <laughs> synth again, because that's the kind of vibe I like. Um, synth pads, maybe? So I want chords. Where's the chord button? Ugh. I can probably edit that later, make it a B minor chord. I don't love that. So I don't exactly know how that's going to go, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to play it and see what happens. So I don't really know what I did there. Just go in and edit it. So now I've got So now I'm gonna shorten those notes and not worry about these passing chords. How does one shorten a note? Like so, <laughs> by clicking on this little icon up the top. So we got, yeah, I can move that back to there. Now I wanted to make this a B minor chord, not a B diminished. So having a bit of music theory knowledge really helps when understanding what to do here. Ah! Just put in a new note, don't want to do that. I don't really know how to trim notes yet. So like I'm I'm sort of playing around with this. I played around with it a little bit, but I'm definitely not advanced in this by any means. But because I understand music theory. Woo! I can put the notes in the right spots. That's probably the key. Okay, so that actually should be a C chord. So we got, so I don't even know, <laughs> so stuck now. I 
Take my little mini homies at home. Okay, so we got uh, C. Oops. No, E, G, and that should be a C. And then that's going to be at the start. Oh, God. I just deleted everything. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't see it. So this is really fiddly, it's probably. Not my favorite way to do things, that's for sure. Uh, and then I'm gonna do a B chord. So, yeah, like if I had an actual keyboard to play this in, that would probably make things much easier. Or if I practiced it a bit more. Probably what I should do. Should have practiced it. All right, I might even delete this and just do that because this is going to take me forever to edit it on this interface because I just don't love doing and playing around with this. So what I'm going to do now is go back into that instrument and actually just get better at playing it while it's on a loop. Got a better idea of it now. <laughs> oh, the battery's gonna die. So yeah, it, it stands to reason that if you're writing a song and you want to get better at it, it's better to get better at the instrument than trying to do the editing, unless you want to get really, really good at editing and not really good at instruments. But the process of being able to do this yourself um, is gonna really help if you can, um, yeah, do it all yourself. All right, what else we got going on here? Okay, now I can record it. Edit that, make it a little bit smoother. There's a couple of notes that I think might work better if they were longer. Like this one. These ones aren't quite lined up to the beat, so.
Now I've got a cool beat. Done in there. So I'm kind of learning how to use garage band at the same time with this one. Strings are a bit aggressive. And then maybe, uh, I'm thinking, so, like there's one section, like I don't really need to do any more to it because the idea is we want to finish ideas um, before, like, oh no, we want to get a rough idea down and get the song finished, if that makes sense, with the flow of the whole song. Because if we spend hours and hours and hours producing this one little section, we're going to get really, really good at producing one little section, but our song and complete completed idea or state is really going to struggle. So... Um, I'm trying now, or I'm thinking, more about the end result as opposed to the beginning, or just trying to do little sections. So now I've got that section, that's cool. Um, so now let's go work on a B section. So this will be, in my understanding, so basically what I might actually do is actually go back and delete these extra sections. So you might, I think the best thing is to start with eight bars that work, so make something small that works first, so a verse, a chorus, and a bridge. Um, I'd probably focus on A and B first, and then start working on C, um, once you've got A and B kind of working together. All right, so now we'll come back and use this um, same hip-hop drum machine that I was using before. And this time, Use a random setting again. Where's my snare? Yeah, I want to make it. Uh, let's go into that again. Delete it. So I think the snare needs to be a bit more happening than that because it made it a. We basically want to go. Um, we don't want to go up in intensity for the chorus, or we want to go down in intensity. But I felt like that was kind of the same thing, or down. I don't want to go up more so in this case. Uh oh. Um. So. Cool, drums, done. All right, we've got 30 seconds left before I move on to something else. Ugh. So we'll probably start with a bass line again. Maybe let's do a, um, a smart bass this time. And let's, um, so what I'm going to do for this part, I'm just going to hang on a little bit longer. Nah. Yeah, I'll hang on a little bit longer for this. Uh, what I might do for this section is actually use a four chord song, just for something fun to do. So we're going to change it from, so we're going to go to C, G, then A minor, and then F. So the four chord song is a one, five, minor six chord and then four chord progression. So in this key, in the key of C, do you want to use the key of C? Um, will basically give us 
a like a really popular chord progression that lots of hit songs are written on. So yeah, let's give it a go and see what happens. In the key of C, like it's pretty predictable in a sense, but let's see what happens um, and go from there. Go in and edit that so it all starts on the bar. Did them all late. Oh, that was good. Cool, and I did two bars for each chord in that one. And I think we're gonna need some cool, like, I don't know, maybe just a guitar for this section. Oh, I'll do strings first. But like some kind of arpeggiated strings. Yeah. Yeah, let's see what happens. Same chords. <laughs> no. <laughs> bow, bow. That's better sound. I think I said I was going to do 10 minutes at first, and now I've done half an hour, and it's, I think I still need to keep going. Sure, that was all kind of closely edited. That'll do, kind of thing. And we'll add in like some sort of guitar -y vibe thing. Um, smart guitar. Ugh. Funk guitar. Ugh. This is all there is. See what happens. Yeah. 
<laughs> that sounds a bit tacky, McTack. Oh, let's see what happens when we go into this. We need a baseline for section B, don't we? And this is really starting to hurt my hand holding this now. Once again, I could select and edit all of those notes that I played wrong, <laughs> which is a whole two bars. I don't know how to do that though. <laughs> See what I mean about learning how to play things properly? You end up editing. Uh-oh. I didn't even do that. Put a passing note in there. So now I've got two sections of a song. So uh, my advice would always be like, get the sections done. And I don't love that weird bass note in there. I think I'm just gonna change it all to a C. So see what I mean? Like once you've got like the next section in it kind of, you come back and you're like, oh, that sounds terrible. So if I spent a whole bunch of time, because it kind of sounded cool at the start. Um, yeah, I was like, oh yeah, keep that. But no, I think it sounds better if it was just all to see. So it just gives you context for whatever it is you're doing. It could actually be cool to change that chord to an E. Yeah, 
yeah. So like, you know, I, I like doing things that are quirky and weird, but sometimes it, for the sake of the song, it might be better just to keep it simple. Um, yeah, anyway, so now we got all sections. Now I'm starting to get my head around how this garage band thing works, which is cool. <laughs> Helps when you know how to use your interface. Yeah, so now I think it needs to follow the same as that second section. Actually created two bass lines, that's why it's weird. Oh well, whatevs. So I just think that this sounds a bit funny. So what I'm gonna do now is actually just select this bit. Can I just edit that one section? So what I wanna do here is actually drop it all down the octave, which I don't think I can. What happens if I do this? Uh, tricky to do. All right, I might finish it up there. So tips are create three sections. Um, create the first section, get a rough idea, then create the second section, then see if they work as a whole. There's no spent time. There's no point in spending. Well, there is, you know, for some people. Um, but in my opinion, it's better to work on the whole thing as opposed to just one section um, because what happens is you get really good at writing one section as opposed to writing a whole song. Um, so you want to make sure your sections have a rough idea and, you know, some sort of drums, bass, blah, 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 whatever sounds you want to put in there. And then but always be thinking about what does this look like as a whole because um, you get really good at writing these separate sections. You get really good at writing songs that have lots of different sections. Um, and I was really guilty of doing that a lot. But now I'm thinking more as like, how can I get more music out there so that my fans my f and people who like my music um, have more music to listen to all the time as opposed to me like, ah, oh, it's taking forever to finish things. So um, yeah, always be thinking about it like that. How do I get, how do I finish it? That's the overlying, overlying thing. All right, cool. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, drop some comments, like, share, whatever. Uh, if you think this would be better done on a computer with the proper screen share and things like that, let me know. Um, whatever what you can post in the comments what you like and what you wish and um yeah see you guys on the next one